offer a scholarship for graduating seniors for that first year. Right. And we understand anybody who's been to college, uh, getting in the door may be hard and you may be able to get in the door initially. Right. But it takes more than that yeah. to finish three more years of school. Right. Uh, our scholarship is only for the first year. Right. Uh, there are other programs out there that we will encourage students to look into to get grants, not loans, but grants, right. Right. Uh, other scholarships that are out there. Um, as an educator, I know you know there are scholarships. Every year you get a report right. of all the money that was left on the table, the table yeah. because you didn't apply. Right. Um, but please, yes, you have my number. Please yeah. feel free to give him my number and my email address, and um, I'll speak to the young man. Because our young men need to know that. You know, like, we don't know how many of him is in our area. Our area. Mm -hmm. But when we see anybody that's out there in the area, we need to be able to say, hey, hold up, this is what I need you to do. Right. You know, we need to be, this, I need you to talk to this person. And you might not have all the answers, but I always say, we're three people from any information we want to know. You're only three people away. It's just that you go all around the perimeter. And, and doing it. Okay, and, and you do might it. talk to the first person. Oh, he sent me to him. Oh, I got to go see somebody else. Oh. And before you even get to that third person, right. you don't gave up because yep. it's hard. Well, life is hard. <laughs> Nothing comes easy. <laughs> so, uh, okay, now, also uh, in certain areas, Alpha, Alpha, Kappa, oh my gosh. Sigma, Lambda, There Kappa. you go, okay. <laughs> You all, you all can, you all are what you all can do scholarship night, right? Yes, um, we do a scholarship each year, and along with the National Panhellenic Council, uh, the first Sunday in May, we give out our scholarships as a panhel. Uh, all the black historically black college or historically black fraternal and sororities come together and they give out. Um, their scholarships on, on that day. Can you all ever do a workshop to, before they get there? Um, like with essays I know, and I know all that. the Deltas and AKs do workshops uh, for essays and so forth. I don't have that information with me, but I'll try my best to get that to you as soon as possible. Because some of our kids, that's their problem. They don't know how to write the essays. There you and, go. Yeah. Because schools only teach so much as we know. Right. And every year something else is crammed in for you to teach. So yeah. certain of those things fall in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, writing essays for scholarship is not on the curriculum. No, it's not. It isn't. And, and kids can't write one and um, they fail for the first time out. Right. With that. Also, um, I need to know from you, the HBCUs that offer anything to get kids in. Because what I mean is this, right now I know at the State Education Shepherd and NAACP, Rice University offers a full ride for any child whose family makes under 60000 a year. Wow. Right, and all it requires is an essay. So I could get a kid in Rice with an essay. But my thing was, I got to get the essay done. Right. But I need to know what HBCUs from you do the same thing so I can put that out there. I'll try to hunt that information down. There's a young man who works in our community by the name of Mr. Cedric Moss. Okay. Who has his own foundation, is planning on having a HBCU college fair on February the 2nd. February 2nd, okay. Um, I was trying to see if I have that information on me right now, so I can put that out as well. Um, but if you could. Because that's coming out, and that's it's coming, coming out pretty pretty soon. And, and we know scholarship time is upon us, right? Also, while you're looking for that, I want to mm. know: is this the flyer that you gave me right here? Yes. If I could give it to our station manager to put on our website. Yes, you may. And, and on in fact, I just noticed that I did not put our website on this flyer. I printed out the wrong flyer; it doesn't have the website on it. But I'll send you the one that has okay. the website listed there as well cleanalphas.com because I can ask them to put it on KISS and our other station that the KISS listen to also alright 
because we need to, to me, any avenue that we have, we can get the information out. We should utilize. Not just for the, not just for the kids, but I would say also for those people who feel like being philanthropists. There you go. <laughs> and, and want to contribute. Yes. And looking for an organization that can support. We would like any support that we can give. We are giving cash donations. And if you want to make a donation to our chapter on behalf of the oratorical contest, we can earmark that money just for that. Or as you said, someone who wants, hey, I want to help out that child right. get the haircut, get yeah. the pants or suit whatever he needs, just contact us and we'll make sure that your monies go toward that event. Because it is uh so I have a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he goes, you yeah, always got a question. Mm -hmm, yes. <laughs> no, okay, with that, um I say me when I put it on my Facebook page. And 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 it's already on my Facebook page, but add it on there mm -hmm. that uh, there would be a, a helping hand out for any young man who feels that I need that haircut and I can't get, I need the proper attire, that we, I'll say we, and I say just alphas, that we can help get that done. Can I say it from me? Okay, good. See, I can say it from Phyllis because you can't say nothing here. But yes. I, I, because I don't want a kid left out. I agree with you um, due to the fact I just can't say that for right. the organization. But I can. Yeah. yeah. I can say that we. Yes. Meaning I know and people. I'll, yeah. And I'll touch and agree with you. We. Yeah. You and I. Right. <laughs> yeah. We, okay. We'll make that happen. We'll All right. Because like I said, I don't want a kid left out because of that. And we yeah. faced that before this year. And I don't. I, it's not that it wasn't hard when, it, when we faced it. You know, you take the wolf step back. Right. And you go, okay, I just got to call some people. That's all I got to do. I have to call some people. Have, has the Alphas reached out to anybody to for help and support with this? Uh, we've put our information or we've given our information to uh, KISD. Right. And um, as for their participation, I've sent it also to uh, Cove ISD. Okay. Um, we've sent it to the local churches in our community that we're members of and um, we've asked educators and other friends of ours to pass this information out so that's word of mouth is the biggest way we've done it as well as on Facebook that's true you know, we are <clears throat> black women in business I'm a part of uh, and we did Juneteenth we, we participated with Juneteenth last year and you know we didn't pass out no flyers we created a flyer, virtual flyer. Mm -hmm. We passed out no flyers and 2,000 people showed up. Wow. Because we did it. We decided that we were going to be smart and see if using social media mm -hmm. worked. So what we did was we just made sure everybody flooded it every day. Right. And with with the flyer, I want to make sure everybody does the same thing. Because if we could do that for that event, we should be able to do it for this one. Because first of all, I wish you would have 20 young men. Yes. I want you all to have so many young men, you have to go recruit more alphas. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. I'm, I'm hoping that we can grow this event to the point where we can move off the campus of Texas A&M and move to the Civic Center and have it in the big grand ballroom there. Because like I said, we, we're we taking some kids uh, that are from Kinship to see Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of them are, are teenagers. teenagers. Okay. So I, I want to be able to say here, 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 here. And everywhere else I go for these two weeks we're off, we're going to hear, here, here. I think that we all should be a walking phone book. A book of information, <laughs> yes. We need to be a yeah. walk. I mean, we used to used to refer to that thing called what, the yellow pages? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, now with information, we need to be walking phone books, a walking information book. So when I see a young man, I guess here, uh, rather than I think no, just here. So yeah, it's here. Here's the information. At least you have it. Yes. If you decide to go, great. If not, if you can't make this event because you have other engagements, that's understandable. But let me at least let you know it's out right. there, so you're not hearing about it. Oh man, I wish I had known. I would have done. I would have done that. Also, okay, I need to ask you because I can't do it without your permission. Mm -hmm. There's certain places I know a lot of young men go. Mm -hmm. uh, I like their they are at the Mastro's Community Center right. place like that can I put the flyer up if they say okay if they say okay for, at that location right if they say okay yes more than welcome to put it up 
And that goes to anybody who wants to print it off the website. If you want to put it up at your local establishment or a place that you go to on it, please ask permission first and um, and do that. Okay, now I'm going to ask you mm -hmm. that one question. Oh. I found I found what I was looking for. Yeah, can you read it? Because <laughs> I want everybody to show I need a flyer too, okay? Okay, I'll, I'll forward this to you as okay. well. Okay. But again, um, Mr. Cedric Moss, who is a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, <laughs> um, has a foundation known as the Moss Foundation. And they are having their second annual Texas Historically Black College College Fair on the 2nd of February, 2019, from 12 to 3 p.m. at the Colleen Community Center off of Veterans Memorial Drive. I went last year. Uh, they had, if I remember correctly, they had almost 10 colleges there. Good. Yes. 10 HBCUs. Um, an opportunity for parents and students to come out and see what their school programs the schools have to offer, to ask them about information that you've just discussed. Do they offer any special programs right. or anything like that? Um, I'll try to get with him and see if they have any commitments from schools at this point. It says here last year we had over 400 attendees. This year we're expecting more. The Moss Foundation is working hard to promote HBCUs here in Central Texas. Check with your HBCU to see if they have committed to attend or send material for distribution. So if you went to an HBCU, I went to Jackson State University, Best school in the South. <laughs> if he said, I'm not a Southern Southern. No. I can't. Uh, I but can't I will definitely that. check with JSU and see if they've sent any information for distribution for this event. Um, check with your school if you went to an HBCU and contact uh, Mr. Moss, Cedric Moss. He can be found on um, Facebook or the Moss Foundation. Uh, it's the second of it's the 2nd of February, 2019, from 12 to 3, second annual Texas HBCU College Fair, from 12 to 3 p.m. on Veterans Memorial Drive at the Community Center. I need to contact them. Maybe I can help them out. And I want somebody from Wally College to be there. Okay. Because we had some voting issues with Wally, Wally College, College. And I would like somebody there from there because we need to uh, link with them so that those African-American males <coughs> and females that were almost disenfranchised as far as voting will know that they can have somewhere to go and talk to when they have that issue because yeah. we don't want that to happen again. I definitely agree with you. So I want to put that information out too. <coughs> okay, now I'm going to ask you a question that I didn't tell you I was going to ask you. Uh-oh. No, oh, you're always ready to answer. <laughs> okay. Now I could just say plain old Alpha Phi Alpha because this is an Alpha Phi Alpha question. Okay. You all just had your um, Founders Day Founders program. Day program. One hundred and twelve years. So how did y'all start? One hundred and twelve years ago. One hundred and twelve I mean, years ago. Because that's a long time. Think of if you will. The year is nineteen oh four. Some of your men attend college at Cornell University. Hold that thought. Cornell University. My grandfather was born in 1904. Think about the era of America in 1904. Think about entering college in 1904. College for a young black man. Um, usually that meant if you were going to college at that time, your family had some means, if you will. If you're going to a predominantly white university, that means you have some brains, if you will. <laughs> and a group of men got together and said, hey, we need to start a study group. A year or two later, they, the way they worked their way through school was um, working as hosts at other fraternity houses. And due to the fact there wasn't any African-American fraternities, predominantly white fraternity houses. But they worked around them enough that they were like, you know what? 
Our study group can become a fraternity. And they decided, seven young men, we want to start a fraternity. In 1906, they came together on December the 4th, 1906, and decided to become Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. From that grew chapter after chapter after chapter. Won't go down the chapters for those who want to be a member. Feel free to come in. <laughs> but uh, it started a growth. Right. And from that, 112 years later, we're here today. In 1974, November the 1st, 1974, Kappa Sigma Lambda, a group of officers who were members of Alpha Phi Alpha came together here in this local community in Killeen and said, hey, we need a chapter here where we can influence the city with the, um, with the aims and goals of Alpha Phi Alpha. Uh, one of them being go to high school, go to college. Again, one of our major focuses, Project Alpha being another, not another national program of ours. Um, and they've built that up. We've given out scholarships. We participate within the local community and all the major events that they have in the clean, greater clean area. And that's how we started. And the men of Alpha or the brothers of Alpha are out to promote uplifting the community, as well as ensuring that young men move forward in their education. I like that. You're 1904, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my grandfather was born in 1904. Yeah, but like I said, <laughs> 1906 is when we officially became a fraternity, but just think about it. You're entering college in 1904. Uh, you're probably, what, half a percent of the campus that's expected to fail yes <laughs> and it's a, the thing is when you said when you talked to me about it was that they lived yes you, you know you still I mean yes. that in that time that they lived because uh, you I would have thought that out of the seven some of them would have been missing I'm serious right would have been missing and not made it so it was supposed to be because if not, they wouldn't have lived long enough to finish anything. Uh, just what? 1865 was once slave. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. And then, been, what? A little over 40 years? It hadn't been that long at all. And, and yeah. So, and we did a lot of things in, during those 1900s. 1900s. A lot of things happened. A whole bunch of things happened. Yes. Yeah, it was the growth of an organization Very that sure. happened. In fact, too, I'll say. <clears throat> Two, two groups that are still here today were formed in the 1900s. NAACP. And, well, three, yeah, it will be three. Urban League. Okay, four. <laughs> Nation of Islam. Nation of Islam. And uh, Alphas. And the Alphas. Yes. They're still here today. You're still here today. That's and wild. I, and that, that's wild. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, you said the 1900s, so I know all, yeah. all my divine nine would be like, so were we. Well, yes. But still, <laughs> saying, but that that, yes. that end up being a turning point for our people, right? Of when, regardless of whether each group knew each other or not, yeah. hopefully they didn't. What well, I'm not hopefully, hope. Why I'm saying hopefully they didn't is so that it wasn't any, you shoved this way. You know what I mean? Right. So it was a powerful year for us as a people. Definitely, definitely. So we need those people to come back today. True. Or at least that that same mentality My, yes. and mindset that incorporating to move forward. And as I said earlier, we have to build, we have to grow the next, maybe not President Barack Obama, but right. at least uh, Secretary of State. That's true. Colin Powell. Attorney General. Attorney General. So we, um, we, we yeah, we do. And we, it we starts do. now. And um, we're not just speaking of African Americans. We're talking about all Americans. Yes. We have to grow them now. Yeah, you know what? Mindset I, of togetherness. Yes. You know when I see a kid, and he's, I say between ten and up, and they're with their parent. I asked the kid. I said, "So what school you go to?" They tell me. Then I said, "What? Well, how are your grades? They okay?" Mm -hmm. I, then you know, so I don't accept okay because I don't know what that means. 
So I said, how many A's you got? How many B's you got? What's your weakest subject? And the parents look at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> and all they says, why are you attacking my child? I'm not attacking Thank your you. child. She goes, you're not? No. No. I'm asking him questions to see how he can answer me back. Does he have to go, um, well, mm, I said, because if he does, then I know we have a problem. I said, so I'm not attacking him. I'm asking him rapid fire questions, but he should know the answer. Yes. I say, and if he doesn't know the answer, I'm telling you he doesn't know the no answer. answer. I said, so we need to do that to our kids. I said, because after it's done so many times, it's instilled into their head. I'm not going to tell her I got to be that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell her I'm going to get an A so she gets out something. Mm. I said, but they're telling the kid, you want you're concerned and you want to no. know about them. But also, as an adult, it looks good for you to do that to a child. Because you're instilling something in him real quick. First, I got to know my answers. Uh, I can't do all these things anymore. It's got to change. Uh, but, you know, one little boy, young man, he's going he's gonna to fill us out. Okay. Because he helped me out for a holiday under the stars, right? right? And he spoke. When he came back from speaking, he said, how did I do? I said, you and um are good friends. <laughs> he said, what? You and um are good friends. He go, oh. Okay, so what do I do? He said, what is um anyway? I said, um is a connection word that means nothing. You have nothing to say at that point in time. So you say um while your brain concentrates and thinks real fast on what I need to say. So you say um. I said, so you need to replace um with something else like like or nothing. You know, so he said, you're not gonna let me speak again? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So the second time he got up, he go, mm. <laughs> <laughs> because he said it one time, but he, he, as it was slipping mm -hmm. out, he realized, he was like, oh, I did it. I said, it's okay. Because now you know that it's there. You know it's your friend and you got to divorce it. <laughs> you know, but he said he's going to work on it. Right. So, he said, so next time he sees me, he's going to get better. So I gave him the flyer and he's going to call you all okay. and, and be a part of it. But he was like, so I got to work on that before I get here. So he said, before I do the oratorical, that means I got to work on, um, Yes, you do. You know, and uh, but like he's kept telling me, he's been saying it all his life. But when I gave him the opportunity to speak to people, he didn't realize he was going to use it. Right, right. He said he just didn't think about. Oh gosh, I'm gonna say it. He said he didn't think about. It. He just talked. She gave me a chance to talk. I'm gonna go talk. And then when that came, he's like, oh man, I used it a whole bunch. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And that's the first yeah. step any type of public speaking yeah. you got to hear yourself and you realize that you're making these um uh 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 and then once someone tells you about it okay i did it 20 times the first time i did it 10 times the next time or oh, i did it three times you're getting better you're getting better and you may never totally get rid of it but if you can get down to less than five compared to when you had 20 yeah You've made a vast improvement and <laughs> very vast improvement. Because most of us are stuck with it. Definitely. Uh, another friend of ours, as you said, when we met, when I was a member of The Rocks, let's quickly go back to somebody say, she's going to talk about The Rocks. Well, The Rocks <laughs> uh, is a military organization in which uh, was founded way back, dog. I think that was in the 1900s as yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, not, not like we've gone 100 years or anything. But it's in the 1960s, if I remember correctly. I can't remember the exact date. But Roscoe Cartwright, brother, fraternity brother, Roscoe Cartwright of Alpha Five. <laughs> General Roscoe Cartwright. Uh oh, General. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the time, he was a lieutenant colonel at, um, at the War College in um, Leavenworth. And again, a group of young men came together and said, hey, in order for us to pass this place, we need to come together and start a study group. And they did. And that helped them get through the War College, um, Commanding General Staff College, excuse me, while they're at Leavenworth. Well, they left there, and most of them were assigned to Washington, D.C. Um, while they're in Washington, D.C., he was traveling back for a meeting. His plane crashed, he passed. And in order, that study group decided to come together, and in honor of him, they named it The Rocks. 
Cool. So now all officers, not just African American officers, but it's mainly it was started to mainly support African American officers because back then, again, you had a small majority of officers who were coming from historically black colleges who didn't know how to integrate into the right. army world. Right. Now that our officers are coming from all colleges, predominantly white as well as historically black. This organization is still there to support officers and help them matriculate up the ranks. Uh, it's just a good organization to be a part of. Anyone can be a part of it. That is um, commissioned officers uh, to include warrant officers. Um, it was a great opportunity to be the president here at Fort Hood. And I know the organization still continues on. It, it mostly focuses on active duty, but civ uh, retirees can still be a p part and participate. Um, cool. As you met me way back when, as you said, I believe that was somewhere around 2002, 2003. Somewhere in there. Somewhere around in that time frame. We've always been trying to connect organizations and groups together, as right. I just did with uh, the Moss Foundation. Uh, we know Mr. Rodney Duckett. Right. He is sponsoring an event on uh, through his foundation on the 2nd of February as well, oh, wow. same day. Uh, the African American Art and History Showcase. It's gonna be at the Colleen Conference Center. Admission is free. Right. Uh, I didn't mention the HBCU College Fair is free as well. Free 99. Free 99. Make sure you come out and get it. Uh, February the 2nd from 11 to 5 at the conference center. So you have two events that day on the other sides of town, but still you can make both. One's at 12 to 3. That's the historically black college college fair. And just go right down the street, W.S. Young, to the uh, Civic Center and go to the African American Arts and History Showcase uh, from 11 to 5. Again, trying to bring organizations, trying to trying to be that information right. that you were talking about, be that that book. Yep, that hey, one. this is what's going on in our community. Let's yep. get out and support. Yes. So you'll know about. Oh, I didn't know about. It. Well, now you know. Now you know. Also, to know because when you get to these th events, you find out more information than you that you thought you knew. Knew. Mm -hmm. And you also find out what your participation can be, because we all should know how we can participate. And I brought up his event as well because the winner of our oratorical contest, oh, he was wow. asked that winner, whatever his speech is, to provide that speech at this event as we showcase African-American art and history. And also, uh, you know, they have to come on the show. Oh, we'll be well, all of, I want all, all of them to come all of, on the show, all of them, actually. Okay. I want all of the young men because I, I don't want to say you're good and you aren't. Right. So. so I want all the young men to come on. So if we have 10, you want all, all 10, 10, all 10 standing up in there? Yeah, we're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. We're going to make, make it work. work. Yeah, I, wait, I'm a mother. I can make it work. You make it work. I can make it work. I look forward to that. Yeah, I, I want all of them to come because I, all of them had a, even though they didn't get, they didn't win, they all shined. Right. They definitely did. Just, yeah. just being there, yeah. you shine. Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you again. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to say something because I can say it. And Steve came. I'm going to fault Steve for leaving Rocks because after he left Rocks, I don't know what happened to Rocks. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I don't know what happened. They just didn't stay in I, touch I, with you. I Trust me, I, they're still going strong. I'm saying, what I, but see, I can say this <laughs> and get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened to them. They fell off into the river somewhere or Belton Lake. Anyway, I find, I'm gonna send them a rescue raft and save them. <laughs> I'll get them back. Bring them back to I'll the get community. Them back in touch with you. Yeah, because um, they left the community, kind of. Um, when I got back, I retired in 2012. When I got back here, a great friend of mine was in charge of the rocks at the time. She was a graduate of Jackson, well, Tougaloo College, but it. Um, All these southern colleges gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> but she saying. went. She went through the Jackson State ROTC program, so I got a chance to. I was proud to see. Uh, she was in, she was the president. And I know the rocks are still going strong here in Colleen. He's just saying it because he's retired military. No. <laughs> but uh, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get, link them back up with you. Okay, good. We'll link them back up. All right. You. I want to thank Steve for coming on the show. It's always fun when he comes on. Because we, we talk a whole bunch of stuff. 
<laughs> but uh, and I and like I said, I want all the young men when they win. Yes. And then just all come. If it's twenty, I want them all to come. Okay. If it's thirty, I want them all to come okay. because they are shined. And I want to thank everyone for listening. Oh, Steve has one thing to say. I just want to put it out one more time. Nineteen okay. January, please yes. be there from nine nine oh six a.m. at the Texas A.M. Central Texas Campus on. 1001 Leadership Place. Uh, what we're coming for, we're coming for the MLK Oratorical Contest, a drum major for justice. Bring your young men and daughters out to here, our community. Okay. And with that, I want to, like I said, I want to thank you for listening to Kids Community Connections and My Kids 1031. I want you to always remember. You cannot lead a positive life with a negative mind. We'll talk to you next Sunday. Bye now.